In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using the interactive calendar component in Crystal Excelsius. And you, you use this component when you have data that is date-oriented or uh, oriented towards calendar days. So for example, I've got this particular data set that shows me for each day how many units each of my sales reps have sold. And uh, this is the raw data, and I've got, I went ahead and made up a, a little space here in yellow for the actual input of the calendar component. The, it's important to remember that the, the output of the calendar component is always a, a simple date. It's either a date, a day, a year, or a month. It doesn't actually work as a selector component. It simply outputs one particular variable. In this case, I want the date to come out. When the date comes out, I've got these gray boxes here, and these are all VLOOKUP um, formulas, right? So what I've got here is a situation where I'm looking up this particular date from this table uh, for the second column. You see the column is 2. Now, for the second gray box, I've got the same thing. Look up this date from this table where the column is 3. So that's the third column in. So on and so forth. So the idea is when you select a date from the calendar component, let's just say we selected uh, August 31st, it'll plop it right here in this particular cell that we're going to identify and all these other cells will change based on the value here. That's the gist of it. So let's go ahead and start this up. I've gone ahead and I've imported my model and I'm going to go to the other category and select the interactive calendar. And once you have that on there you can go ahead and configure it. So let's double click on the calendar component to bring out the properties window and let's do a little bit of configuring. Now the first thing you'll notice here is title. That's pretty much self-explanatory. You type in whatever you want or link it to a cell. That's fine. Insert data. This is a section where it'll actually allow you to define what the output of the calendar can be. Like I said, the calendar component will allow you to output either a day or a date. So you can actually come in here into the insert option and you need to select a day or date. Now you may want to select a day, which is a day number output, to work with some formulas that you have in your Excel model. In my particular case, I want a date to output. The actual date needs to go into a specific cell. Now there are other options here. There's an insert year in, which is a, a, basically telling the calendar component to output just the year into a specific cell. Or you can output just the month into a specific cell using the insert month in. In my case, I don't need to do both of those. I just need to put out the whole date. So I'm going to put insert source data in click on the cell reference icon here and just specify which cell that I want the, the output to go into. In my case, I want it to go into cell A2. Press OK. OK, so I've defined what I want to output. Now I'm going to give the calendar some behavior. Now there's a couple of things that you'll need to know about calendar components. The first thing is the default behavior for a calendar component is to start on the current date. Sometimes your data set, just like mine here in this example, is historical data. My data set is providing data for August 2005 to September 2005. There is no reason why I need the calendar to start on today, making the user go back a couple of years or a couple of months in order to get to the correct selection. So I want to go ahead and click on Use Custom Date. Now Use Custom Date will allow me to select a specific day that I want my calendar to start on. So as I change these numbers, you'll notice that the calendar here changes to uh, react to my properties. So the eighth month, which is August 2005, on the first day. This is where my data set starts. So this is where I want the calendar to start, August 1st, 2005. Then the next thing is calendar limits. Again, my data set only goes from August to September. Why would I need it to go all the way out to forever? It, it, it can, if you leave it like this, it'll basically go back forever and forward forever. So let's just go ahead and click on this and start month here is August 2005 and then end month is September 2005. Now this allows my users to freely go through this calendar and select exactly which dates they want, knowing that they're not going to go out of the limits of the data set itself. 
And that's pretty much it. There's a couple of other things you can do with the parents, but right now, this is what we're going to work with here. So now my calendar is going to put out a date in the exact place I want it to, and I'm going to go ahead and have a, have a chart tied to that. So let's go ahead and put a um, column chart here. It's fine. And we're going to double click here, select my data range, and my data range is going to be right here. Press OK. And then I'm going to assign my category access labels, and that's going to be my sales reps names. OK. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and preview this. Now, as, when I, as I select a particular date, for example, August 2005, let's say August 16th, you'll see for each date, I get a status on where my sales guys were as far as their sales go. And I can go to September, but I can't go any further than that because I've set my limits. And again, I can go back to August, but I can't go any further than that because I've set my limits there too. So this is a very basic example of how you can use the calendar component to report on daily information.